Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. And I have something from AliExpress here. So this is a solder pot. I've seen people using these to salvage components in particular from old PCBs. I thought I'd give that a go. So this is the solder pot. I paid €13.59 for this one, okay. Price has gone up a little bit, it changes all the time on AliExpress, so 15.79. There are four versions, so we have the 100 watt and the 150 watt, and again 150 and 250 watts. So I actually have the 100 watt. I thought let's try the cheaper one and let's see how well this works. So we need some solder to use this as well. And we shouldn't just use regular solder because regular solder has flux in. And when you put a large amount of solder in here, it will smoke a lot. I mean, you could fill it with solder outdoors and leave it there for some hours and it'll eventually stop smoking. But I actually bought some solder bars, which are also cheaper as well. So these are the ones I bought. I got two of them, so they're 250 grams each, 459. Again, the price has changed a little bit since I ordered, so you can see there. 539 so I have two bars of this and this is tin solder rod lead free soldering it says but then it says 6347 so I think it actually is like leaded because that's what it looks to me okay there are various options you could use maybe I would be better with lead free because it has a higher temperature but we're gonna find out so this is the solder I bought two large rods of metal uh, I think this is leaded in actual fact you can bend these things okay let's have a look at the solder pot so we have an adapter this actually comes with like a, a strange plug on I'm sure obviously if you live in the right part of the world then this is what you would use you can buy them with UK or EU plugs on so there we go, I have the adapter, okay. This is very simple to control, so temperature approximately 200 to approximately 450. Okay, I think we'll set it somewhere in the middle, on off. And really that's all we have, so this is the solder pot. This doesn't actually come out from here, it's actually fixed in here. There's a little metal tray here, so this will prevent any spillages going anywhere. The same inside, there's like, a, it's all metal down there, so if some solder goes down there, it's not going to go into the electronics, okay? So I'll chop up some of the solder, put it in, we'll melt it. I'm going to fill this up basically to the top, and then see if we can use this to salvage components. I've set it to full, and it's taken about six or seven minutes. I found it very difficult to cut this. I have a hacksaw somewhere but I think it's in the van so I just left it resting in here and then it started to melt and once it started it's now melting nicely I can still hold this actually it's not getting hot at this top end obviously if it starts getting hot I should just hold it in some pliers you can see that this is melting so there's no smoke coming out of that this is what we want Mm. let's keep going until it's full well that's one full bar in let's start on the second one okay and I think that's pretty much full to the top so I've changed to the other camera angle, so you can see that is actually full. Now let's try desoldering some parts. So this is single-sided board, but surely this is where this is going to work best. So we'll rest the board on top of the solder, and let's see what happens. It's definitely touching the solder. Let's see how long it takes. Well, it's sizzling and that came off very easily. Okay, let's try a few more things. Obviously, this is not particularly good for the PCB. This is very good for salvaging components. 
Let's try this connector. So let's see what happens. Yeah, off it came, but I dropped it in by mistake. Not a good move. Okay, but this is the first time I've ever tried this. I've got in a pair of pliers now. I think it's a much better idea. Okay, let's try a through hole component. So we have a capacitor here. Yep, how about one of these large inductors? Yep, that would be difficult to unsolder with hot air actually. Another capacitor. Yes, but he took the track off. I have a very large connector here. Let's see if we can unsolder this. Oh, easily. Yeah. Another one. Yep, some transistors. In fact, there's a chip here. Let's go for the chip. Okay. Now the transistors. Yeah, these are just falling off the board now. You see, I can just literally now sit here and just pick things off as I wish. Yeah, anything that's coming off now is just melting. And a large MOSFET. Okay. So, yeah, once you get a thing warm, they come off really easily. Let's have a look to see what we've salvaged and see how well it survived. So we can see this is where I desoldered the large inductor, same as that one. That would be quite difficult to do with hot air, to be quite honest, They're very large. Yes, with a decent hot air gun, you will do it. This is one of the capacitors. The other one was here. This is where it took a big piece of trace off the board because I hadn't let it melt through before I tried to take it off. This was the QFN chip. So you can see this had a large pad underneath it. You would have to use hot air otherwise to do this. Same with this one. Okay, came off nicely. This doesn't have the pad underneath, however. This was one of the connectors. This was the large connector, so that's come off nicely as far as the board is concerned. This came off without any damage to the PCB on this side at least. And I say at least because this is quite messy. So you can see quite a lot of the solder stuck to the board. This is burnt. This is where I was actually removing that large inductor. I had to get a lot of heat into this to do it. So this method is only really suitable for salvage work. It's not suitable for repair work. Looking at the solder pot. Well, you can see a chunk of it overflowed and ended up down there. You could obviously melt that back in when you heat this up. I used two entire strips of solder, so 500 grams in total. That just filled this. So I would suggest if you're going to be doing this on any sort of scale, get three strips. I mean, they were about five euros each. So two will fill it. And then the other one just use it to top it up. And it'll last you for ages, that other one. The thing itself is quite stable. I mean, I was worried about this pot falling over, but it's attached into here so it doesn't come out. You'd have to tip the entire thing over, and that's not going to happen without some effort. This tray caught the overflow. It happened and it caught it, so we can see that works. I would say, if you were doing this, wear some gloves. The 
not asbestos, but you know, those type of heat resistant gloves because you could have an accident with this and if you do it's going to cause a lot of injury so guys yeah i don't play with it but get some good gloves if you're going to be doing this a lot now let's have a look at the components and see how well they survived this is the capacitor that ripped a piece off the board but the capacitor is fine okay nice salvage capacitor here is the other one again came off just fine this is that large connector so you can see that this really came off well there's still some solder attached onto these pins but we can very easily just remove that now that would be difficult to unsolder with hot air you see there's a metal lug here and here as well and that just came off the board really nicely i think i would struggle to do unless i use a preheater in hot air yeah Again, this one, another you know, plastic connector came out really nicely, unsoldered very well. So for connectors, this is a good technique. Fair enough. This one, I actually took it off nicely, then dropped it into the solder pot. You saw what happened. Yeah, you saw what happened. Let's see if this will actually come off it. So despite dropping it into the solder pot, it actually uh, looks like it survived that. Well, let's just yeah, clean it off. Yeah, look at that. So even that one that fell in actually came off in usable condition by the looks of it. Yeah. Once again, it had two lugs holding it down plus the pins. This pin was missing, by the way. You can see on the PCB where this came from. So it came from here. So we haven't lost the pin. Okay. The large inductor really nice and clean this is the chip with a pad underneath nicely salvaged same with the large MOSFET came off nicely okay the QFN so again this had a large pad underneath it you can see I have a resistor stuck to it do you see that got stuck to it but we could easily remove that if we want the chip or the resistor for that matter okay and then i managed to remove a few small components so fuse yep came off just fine a small transistor or voltage regulator no problem another one yeah similar kind of device again that has the had underneath but it unsoldered just fine and we just managed to get off a uh, small smd diode and a few small components this is where i was just picking them off the board one after the other so all in all if you do a lot of salvage work and bear in mind really this is only suited to single sided pcbs okay but if you're salvaging off these sort of pcbs this was very quick once it heated up it took about seven or eight minutes to heat up but bear in mind, I had to melt the solder it for the first time. And I'd say it's a good method, yeah. So if you have a little bit of money to spare, this wasn't expensive, get over to AliExpress, order one, and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Chat about it down there, and I'll see you all soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now.